is not just a list of hajat. It's more general than that. Sometimes you make dua and you want something. You have a haja. It's a request-based dua. And there's nothing wrong with this. But sometimes you make dua not because you want something. Because you enjoy speaking to Allah. You know, many of you, you have friends. Are you a good friend if you only call when you need something? Imagine you had a friend. They only call you when they want something from you. This is not a true friendship. A friend also calls when they want to hear your voice. They just want to talk. They enjoy talking to you. This is why the Quran tells us about Musa alayhi salam. When Musa went to that mountain after spending 10 years with Shu'aib on his farm, he was traveling in the middle of the night, going back to Egypt. And he gets lost. So you can imagine, it's a cold night, it's dark, you know, there's no, you know, there's no uh, lights outside, pitch black. And Musa sees light, he sees a fire on the top of the mountain. So he tells his family that you stay here, I'm gonna go and try to get some directions. And or at least get some firewood because it's cold. So he goes up the mountain. And you can imagine how, how scary this is. It's pitch black. You're climbing up this mountain. It's dark. And you get to a fire and you think that there must be people there. There's no one there. And then you hear a voice. Ya Musa, innahu an Allah. Imagine you go up and someone calls your name. If it was me and you, we would jump off the cliff. We would be terrified. Ya Musa, innahu an Allah. Allah, he reveals himself to Musa. Now Musa, you can imagine, all your life you're reaching out to Allah. You're calling upon him. And now Allah is responding to you in a very direct way. So you can imagine how nervous Musa alayhi salam was. He was very nervous, very shaken. This is why Allah, you know, He says, وَأَنَ اخْتَرْتُكَ فَاسْتَمِعْ لِمَا يُحَا Allah speaks to him. And then Allah sees that Musa is very shaken. You know when someone is nervous, you know, when you go to a job interview, and the, the boss sees, the hiring manager sees that you're nervous, what do they usually do? If they're nice, they make small talk. You know, they talk about, the weather, they ask you about, your, they try to calm your nerves. Allah, He does the same thing. What does He say? It's mentioned in Surah Taha. Allah says, وَمَا تِلْكَ بِيَمِينِكَ يَا مُوسَى O oh Musa, what is in your right hand? Allah doesn't know. Allah knows. Allah says, وَمَا تِلْكَ بِيَمِينِكَ يَا مُوسَى O oh Musa, what is in your right hand? A very simple question that requires a very simple answer. وَمَا تِلْكَ بِيَمِينِكَ يَا مُوسَى The answer should be what? هِيَ عَصَايَ That's it. It's my staff. But what does Musa do? قَالَ هِيَ عَصَايَ أَتَوَكَّأُ عَلَيْهَا وَأَهُشُّ بِهَا عَلَى غَنَمِ وَلِيَ فِيهَا مَآرِبُ أُخْرَى Does Musa give a short answer or does he give Allah a long answer? He gives him a long answer. Musa, he starts to talk. That it's my stick, I use it to lean on and I use it to crush the leaves for my cattle to eat and I have other uses for it. The Mufassireen, they say, they ask, why did Musa give a long answer to a question that only required a one word answer? They say because he wanted to prolong the pleasure of speaking to Allah. That he, he was enjoying this communication with Allah. He enjoyed speaking to Allah.